right now. Today is the day that you choose to change the rest of your life. It is time to turn your setback into the greatest comeback story ever told. And nobody is more capable than you. This is the Ranting Weight Watcher Podcast, the future number one weight loss podcast in the world. I am your host, Donato Russo. I hope you enjoy the show today. If this is your first time here and you enjoy the show, please subscribe and spread the word of the Ranting Weight Watcher Podcast wherever you are and to whomever will listen. If you'd like to connect on social media or wherever else, Check out my Linktree page, Linktree forward slash The Ranting Weight Watcher. Let's connect today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 163 of The Ranting Weight Watcher podcast. If this is your first time here, welcome to the show. If you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. And if the app you're using to listen to me allows you to rate the show, please leave a four-star or five-star rating. If it also allows you to leave feedback about the show, please consider leaving feedback if this show has helped you in any way. What happens when you do this for me is when someone else is searching weight loss-related podcast on that same app, my show will show up higher on the list because of the ratings, because of the, the amount of feedback received. So you guys doing that will support the show to get exposure on it. Most of all, if you enjoy this show and you know that there are other people in your life that will benefit from this same message, tell them. Tell them about the show. The same way you would tell them about the great Italian restaurant you ate at, tell them about the show in the same way. Because you know what? Nobody sends people faster to a restaurant than the people that have already eaten there. And that's the same thing you would do for me. If I tell you this is a great show, I just sound like a businessman. But if you tell someone this is a great show, they may listen. So, if you enjoy it, if I've helped you in any way, please consider helping the podcast by spreading the word of the Ranting Weight Watcher. Well, let's not waste time. Let's get into this! Journey updates. I am up this week 9.4 pounds. For the month of October, it is a total of 5.4 pound gain. Total loss since January 2019 is 163.6 pounds. Total pounds remaining to get to the 175 pound milestone is 11.4 pounds. Total pounds remaining to get to the 200 pound milestone is 36.4 pounds. Now, in spite of that bad news, Phase four, week four of the carbohydrate reduction for Sundays ended in my first success on a Sunday. Now, for those of you who are new here, I have been on a quest to reduce carbohydrates, increase protein in my lifestyle. Phase one, two, and three of my quest worked on Monday through Friday. Phase four decided to concentrate on Sundays only. So week four, phase four was my first successful Sunday. My goal was to be at 2,300 calories for the day. I was at 2,276 this Sunday. My goal for protein was to have 229 grams taken. Sunday intake was 203 grams. My goal for carbohydrates is to get down to 175 eventually. From 360 last week, I am down to 227. So that was a nice drop. My goal is to be at 90 grams of fat per day. I was at 79 grams. So overall, first Sunday success, I'm happy about that. 
Now for Monday through Friday, there was one day that I did I went above the cal caloric intake. All the rest of the days were uh, right where I want to be. Week 28, caloric average intake was 2,311 calories. Week 28 protein intake was 237 grams. Week 28 carbohydrate intake was 193 grams. See, that's when I went over. I wanted to be at 175. And week 28 fat average is 73 grams. And for that, I'm under. I want to be at 90 grams. Overall, Monday through Friday is looking good. And I'm so happy to say that I have my first successful Sunday. We're going to keep it going. Full steam ahead. The gain is number one of three. If you're new here, I don't make any moves unless I have three gains in a row. Three gains means there's a trend. And if there's a trend, that means there's a change in behavior. So then you go into analysis mode, you figure out what has changed. You make some changes and you move forward. But I never make any changes regardless of the size of the gain if it's not three gains in a row. So I want to talk to you today about scale surprises. I'm going to go back to the beginning of my journey here. So back in 2019, when I first started, way in day dictated the entire weekend. So if I got on the scale and it was a good result, it was going to be a good weekend. If I got on the scale and it was a bad result, or if it was no result, it was going to be a bad weekend. I was overly emotional about everything regarding the scale. I would literally go crazy for hours and waste hours and hours of the weekend trying to figure out what I did wrong and what changes to make. Going out of my mind, ruining the weekend for probably my family is just, just as much. Because I was, that's how obsessed I was with the result. When I look back at that version of myself now, I often refer to that version of myself as the immature me. At some point in that first year, the later half of that first year, I started to introduce exercise into my life. And because I took such a systematic approach with how I started to implement exercise, I started to realize that being consistent with exercise was more important than being perfect with exercise. In this point in my journey, I was starting to connect dots and saying, wait a minute, it's not about being perfect. It's about being consistent. You could be imperfect the entire time, but as long as you're consistent with whatever you're doing, it's going to benefit you in the long run. And literally, the accuracy of what you're doing can always be adjusted once you achieve it. So then I thought, if this was possible to implement consistency like this in regards to exercise, it was also possible to implement this same kind of consistency in regards to how I handle food in my life. The quest became consistency as a whole with eating choices, so whatever food I would choose to eat, how I would track it, how I would weigh and measure it, and my exercise. All of those things, the quest became achieve consistency in all of those things. And as I chased it, as I became more and more consistent with my behavior, something miraculous happened. I never expected this to come out of it. If you would ask me to go back to the first day I started to implement exercise, and even the first day that I realized consistency was more important, I would never have guessed that this would have happened. And this is why I'm telling you all this. Once I was so confident in my work that I put in every day, what were my goals every day? My goals were to track everything I ate, to weigh and measure everything I ate, and to exercise on the days I was supposed to exercise. Those were all the goals. 
and it didn't have to be perfect. It had to be 97% because my accuracy can always be adjusted. So as long as I was at 97% with my food choices, with the weighing and measuring of that food, and with my exercise, I was happy with my journey. Now in this process, once I became consistent in every single aspect I just laid out for you, all of a sudden I realized something. The same way in 2019 that the scale fluctuated six, seven, eight pounds, whatever it was, and I would freak out, even after achieving all that consistency, I still had huge weight fluctuations. So at this moment, it's just like, huh, you mean to tell me that even after achieving all of this consistent work, I'm still going to have days like this? It was like in The Wizard of Oz when they see the wizard, you know, how it's all working. It was like the shattering of the, you know, like when the magician tells you how the secret of the trick is. Now it's not a big deal anymore. That's exactly the kind, that's the only way I could describe what happened to me that day. When suddenly I had such confidence in the work I was doing and still there were huge scale fluctuations. It was like the shattering of the glass, like the magician showed himself and it was like, come on, man. And I would just walk away. All of the power that the scale had before that day was broken. And all of my value became, did you do the work this week? What did you do? Did you track every day this week? Yes. Did you weigh and measure every day this week? Yes. Did you exercise five days of this week? Yes. The boxes are checked. Oh, there's still a gain? Okay. At some point in, in all of this, I even created consistency in making changes to combat all of the emotional stuff that I went through. Somewhere along the line, I made a system that I would not make any changes to what I did. And part of this was because I was so confident in what I did. I would never make a change in what, how I was eating or how I was exercising unless there were three gains in a row because three gains in a row tells me a trend. Then I need to analyze what I'm doing, make a change, and move forward. So on Saturday morning, October 21st, I go for a six-mile walk. I come home. I shower, just like I do every Saturday. And then I go and step on the scale. And I see a 9.4-pound gain. For the first time in my life, stepping on a scale, I bust out laughing. My first thought in all this was, damn, Don, you really know how to make a milestone approach extremely dramatic. Because it was literally laughable. Laughable that this would happen. I was two pounds away from the 175 milestone, and suddenly I'm 10 pounds away, right? Or 12, whatever it is. But just like that. Seven days, I gained nine and a half pounds in seven days. <laughs> uh, it's still kind of ludicrous now to think about it. But so many people have moments like this, and that's part of the reason I want to talk about this today. So many people have moments where they put so much effort into the work, and then they stepped on the scale on weigh-in day, and the scale went up. And they got so emotional that they made a bunch of changes, and in that moment, probably the most important thing to do was to do a repeat of what they just did. That, would probably, that could probably be the most important thing you could possibly do. And yet you're looking at the current result. And because WW kind of gears you in this manner of, I worked for seven days and now it's time to step on the scale and see my result of the last seven days of my work. There is no guarantee that when you step on the scale on weigh-in day, that the last seven days are reflected of that result. Because however many of you listening right now, you all know you had that one way in that went in your way. You lost two pounds. You lost a pound and a half. When you know you probably should have gained five. We all had that. We all had a week where we just went out of our minds eating. And then we stepped on the scale and you're like, what? I lost this kind of way in. And, and I know you're all nodding your head because every single one of you have done this. This kind of way in is proof that the work you do in seven days doesn't show up on weigh-in day. 
Because none of us in our right minds who had a week like that, where we went a little crazy, we stepped on the scale and we lost anyway, none of us ever replicated that week. None of us. Because if it's true, if the work you do in seven days shows up on weigh-in day, and you go crazy eating, and you still have a loss, then, by logic, you should be able to do everything exactly the same, eat just as heavy, and have the same result next week, right? None of you would ever do that, because you know that's crazy, and you would consider yourself lucky. So if it works that way, it works the other way. You're going to have gains you didn't earn. And you know what? I'm four and a half years, almost five years into this, The gains you don't earn suck, but they're there. These are the moments that are most important for you to have such confidence in your work to be able to stay the course. How many of you listening to me right now could have a nine and a half pound gain this week and say, I'm doing everything exactly the same way? To have such confidence in what you do, to be able to look at that gain stare it in the face, laugh, and say, I'm doing it all again the exact same way. That's what I want you to create. I want you to create so much confidence in your work that you're going to step on a scale and see some kind of gain like that one day, and you're going to laugh at it the way I did on Saturday because you know it's freaking nuts to see that kind of gain. That's what I want for you guys. Now, why am I telling you all this? Why am I harping on weigh-in day so much? Because the season is coming for gaining. It's October 23rd. Tis the season for gains. Okay? We got holidays approaching. The first holiday in the list is Halloween. The first thing I'm going to say about these holidays is that they are just each one day, right? Each holiday is one day, but we turn it into a three month thing. This is the time of year where everybody goes out of their minds and they say, Jesus, take the wheel and they go flipping nuts in the refrigerator. Nuts. Halloween comes. You go out and you buy a bunch of Halloween candy for the kids that, if you looked at the past three, four years, they probably haven't been showing up. So probably, if we, I, could, I could bet money 80, 90% of the candy you bought ended up staying in the house because the kids didn't show up. Let's really be real here. And then you go through this whole thing like, I can't say no to the candy because it's already in the house. You literally, all year round, so if I take the month of October out of the calendar for a minute, all year around, you pass candy numerous times. Numerous times. Every week. And you say no every week. But for some reason... A little fun size, you can't say no to. This is what I don't understand about Halloween. It's not like grandma made this candy in her 100-year-old kitchen. It's literally mass-produced garbage. On a global scale. In Florida, the local news here has this It has this segment called Dirty Dining. And so often, well, no, you know what? 100% of the time on this Dirty Dining segment, you see a local small business owner getting condemned for having uh, violations in his restaurant. You never, ever see one of these enormous food factories have food violations. They never appear on this dirty dining segment. Do you mean to tell me that these enormous multi-billion dollar companies have clean factories? 
I can't well, I can walk in there with white gloves and not find a single violation? Are we really saying that? Is that really possible? I never see some multi-billion dollar company end up in the dirty dining segment. So I am to believe there's not a single roach in the entire facility with thousands of workers. I am to believe that. Meanwhile, the small little family owned restaurant on the corner gets ripped apart on a weekly basis. That's all that's ever on that segment. Small family owned businesses. I'm supposed to believe multi-billion dollar corporations don't have a single problem in their entire facility. A single violation. Or do they just have a lot of something that's green and they make sure that whoever's walking around gets a lot of that green in their pocket before they walk around. So I'm to believe that this Halloween candy that was mass produced in a billion dollar factory that supposedly never has any health code violations because you never see them on dirty dining is impossible to say no to because the food is in the house. You go to grocery stores every week, some of you multiple times a week. What's at the cashier when you're on your way out? What are you passing? You're passing candy. You go to the pharmacy multiple times a week. When you go to pay at the cash register, what's at the cash register? Candy. You go to gas stations, convenience stores. What do you find in every single one of these places? Target, Walmart, name them all. You go to them numerous times a week. And you walk right by candy. What, the same money that paid for the candy? for So the, is it the excuse that you get to buy candy for kids that may or may not show up? Is that the idea? Because you have the excuse, oh, it's for the kids. We're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. I now present to you the Ranting Weight Watcher Accountability Creed. If you choose this day to say this creed, you are accountable to me, the author. You are also accountable to all of those before you who have taken the creed and all of those after you who will take the creed. But most of all, you are accountable to yourself. Now recite with me the accountability creed. Nothing can stand in my way because I choose to be unstoppable. My challenges crumble in my presence because I choose strength when I am weak. My insecurities have no power over my life because I choose confidence in the face of fear. I own every last one of my mistakes because I choose growth over mediocrity. The mirror and the scale are powerless because I move forward in spite of the result. Circumstances are not obstacles because I see solutions instead of problems. The demons of my past can no longer torment me because I choose to renew my mind daily. All things are possible as long as I believe because if God is for me, who can be against me? This is the creed I declare each day. It is about what I do, not what I say. I will learn the work that needs to be done. I will never stop even when I've won. I will work consistently, no matter the cost. I refuse to believe that all hope is lost. I will work when I want to. I will work when I don't. I will work when they are cheering. I will work when they won't. 
I will work when it's easy. I will work when it's hard. The atonements that I've made are made with no regard. I will work when it's cold. I will work when it's hot. Because choices have consequences, justified or not. When I think I know it all, I will start back at one. Because regardless of what I think, the work is never done. And from this moment forward, when times are tough, I choose to believe that I am enough. And we are back. Thanks for sticking with me. We have all these holidays approaching. Thanksgiving comes right after that. Now, Thanksgiving is one day. But our problem, and you know what? Thanksgiving food is not even all that bad. There are some of them that's bad. But for the most part, someone on Weight Watchers can do Thanksgiving with their eyes closed. I mean, I do a miniature Thanksgiving every Wednesday night. My wife makes a turkey breast every Wednesday night, and I have a half a cup of stuffing and some veggies and the turkey with some brown gravy every Wednesday night. It is extremely possible to pull off Thanksgiving as long as it remains on Thanksgiving. When you're eating the leftovers for a week and a half after Thanksgiving, that's when Thanksgiving becomes a problem. Now you got Hanukkah. Now, I don't know much about Hanukkah. I don't know if you eat like a a big feast every night of Hanukkah or if it's just one of the nights that you eat the big feast. I'm not sure. Whatever it is, I'm going to assume for this conversation, I'm going to assume it's one of the nights that people celebrating Hanukkah are not feasting every single night. And Christmas... You have basically two, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. In my family, Christmas Eve was always bigger than Christmas Day. I think that's just an Italian thing. I'm not sure. Italians seem to celebrate the Eve more than the day. And the, in my household, at least, Christmas Eve was a huge deal. Christmas Day was a little more laid back. And then you got New Year's. And New Year's, let's, let's face New Year's for a second here. New Year's is really for kids who are in that party stage of their life and senior citizens who don't really have any responsibilities because the kids are gone. <laughs> Everybody in the middle is probably doing exactly what I do on New Year's Eve, falling asleep before the ball drops. <laughs> and... Uh, Maybe waking up seconds before just to look at your spouse and say, oh, she's asleep. Well, I'll, say, I'll say Happy New Year tomorrow. And you go back to sleep. So really, what is it? How many days is it? We turn the holiday season into three months of gaining. But how many days is it actually? What is it? Six days, five days, whatever it is. It's a bit crazy. To take this approach and say, well, I'm just going to enjoy the holiday and do whatever I want. It's just ludicrous. Ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. I challenge each and every one of you. If you've been on WW consistently and you can look back a year to the last holiday season. Take your way in from, say, let's just say October 1st, right? Whatever weight you were on October 1st. And then whatever weight you were was the first weigh in of January, right? So after Jan- so after New Year's, the first weigh in after New Year's, right? And then if you had gain, so let's say you had a 10, 20 pound gain, whatever it was. I want you to go further in your tracker. How much, how long did it take you to lose it all and get back to the, 
the October 1st wait? How many weeks did it take to lose the, the holiday weight that was gained? Because you decided to say, ah, I'm just going to enjoy myself and do whatever I want. And then ask yourself, was it really worth it to say, I'm going to enjoy the holidays? Could you have gone through the holiday and still enjoyed it and been a little bit restrictive or been a little bit more proactive on how you handled it? In the four and a half years I'm on plan here, another thing that I do every single year at this time of year was developed in that process. And I call it the game plan. I implement the game plan every holiday season. And every year, I enable you guys to do the same. Every year at some point before the holiday season starts, I... Talk about the game plan every single time. Because I want you guys to get it. I know there's new listeners who haven't gone back and listened to previous ones. So some of you are already know what the game plan is. And you're like rolling your eyes right now. I'm like, please don't repeat this again. I'm sorry. But I have to repeat it for the new people. This is the game plan. And what the game plan is designed to do, it's not designed to ensure you lose weight over the holiday season. So if that's what you're thinking, get it out of your head. It is designed to keep you mindful of what you're doing. And it is des designed to eliminate guilt in the process. Because if you do everything the way I say you should do it, the one thing you'll notice is you don't feel guilty for having gained the weight, if you do gain. Now, I had one person in the years that I've been doing this implement this, and she ended up coming out of the holiday season with a loss. That was a few years ago, and her name was Trisha. She implemented the game plan. She executed it exactly as it should be done. She came out of the holiday season... I can't even remember how many years ago this was. But that tells me that the game plan works. I implement the game plan every year. I know it works. But when someone else does it and it works, that proves it, right? So here's the game plan. The game plan is to enable yourself by putting in work ahead of time. Okay? So let me start by saying this. If you right now own a fitness tracker, whether that's Garmin, Fitbit, Apple Watch, and you have it already connected to the WW app so that when you do exercise, the points for your exercise already show up, then don't worry about this next part that I'm going to talk about. But if you have a fitness tracker that does not connect to the WW app, there's no way to do it, then maybe you want to do this next part. And if you have no fitness tracker at all, you definitely want to do this next part. So the step one is you're going to download the Fitbit app. You're going to create an account with Fitbit, even though you don't have a watch. When it gets to the point to ask you what kind of watch you have, you're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom of that list and you're going to see it says, use my phone as a tracker. You're going to select that option. Once you finish the whole setup, you're ready to go. Your second step is you're going to connect the WW app to your Fitbit account. I haven't done this in a long time, but... I'm sure that WW can help you connect the two to each other. And what that means is WW is going to receive your activity data from the Fitbit app that you put in. Okay, so that's step two. Now, step three is going to be pre-tracking. As we get up to Thanksgiving, I want you to plan Thanksgiving ahead of time. 
I want you to purposely track the entire day. From breakfast to dinner and to dessert. All of it. Okay? Down to the measurement. I want you to track it. If you want a cup of stuffing, track a cup of stuffing. If you want 12 ounces of turkey, track 12 ounces of turkey. If you want a, a cup of mashed potatoes, track a cup of mashed potatoes. Track it all. If you want a slice of custard pie, a slice of apple pie, and a slice of pumpkin pie, track all three. Track it all ahead of the day. Now, as we lead up to the day, I want you to go outside. I want you to open that Fitbit app and you set it up to go for a walk. You're going to hit start and you're going to go for a walk. You're going to start a walk from the Fitbit app on your phone. There's a little plus sign in the corner. You Push that plus sign and then you're going to see it says start exercise. You're going to click that and the choice is going to be walk. And then you're going to see a red play button. You hit the red play button. Then you're going to put the phone in your pocket and you're going to go for a walk. And because you're using your phone... The phone will dictate the speed that you're walking. It will take your um, height and weight into the factor. And it will dictate the distance that you walked for that time period that you walked. With all of this information, it will come up with a caloric burn. When you go and you come back home and you finish that exercise what's going to happen is it's going to send that information to WW. And, that, and WW is going to take that information and turn it into activity points. And whatever you decided to eat on Thanksgiving Day, the activity points that you built are going to be added to your day. All of them are going to be added to the day. Okay? So now you have your daily points, you have your weekly points, and you have all of the activity points that you will have built up leading up to Thanksgiving. And so Thanksgiving comes. And if you want to get one more walk-in on Thanksgiving, you get that walk-in on Thanksgiving too. When you come back and you're showered and families are starting to arrive, that's the time to execute the game plan. You've done all the prep work. When a, when a football coach knows he's playing a team on Sunday, he does all this prep work. He watches film. He comes up with a game plan of how he's going to attack the defense, how the, what, everything it's going to take to win the football game. In your case, winning the football game does not translate to a loss on the scale. That's not what winning the football game is. Winning the football game is coming out of the holiday with zero guilt. That's the whole point of the game plan. Building up points that you worked for. Pre-tracking the food. And then execution. You put in all that work. So... The day comes, you're staring at your tracker. You decided that you were tracking three slices of pie. Make sure you eat the three slices of pie. You decided to track 12 ounces of turkey. Make sure you eat the 12 ounces of turkey. All of that stuff you've done. Eat it just the way you tracked it for the entire day. Don't go above it. If you tracked a cup of stuffing, Eat a cup of stuffing. Look, in my house, every Thanksgiving, the measuring cups are on the table. If I can do that, so can you. Nobody's a weirdo for putting measuring cups on a, on a table. If you decided to eat a cup of stuffing, eat a cup of stuffing. If you decided to eat a cup of stuffing and a cup of mashed potatoes... Put them both in the plate, but don't put more. 
Put exactly what you put in ahead of time. If you end up eating less, I don't care. But do not add more once you're in the fight. Whatever you put ahead of time is what you execute. If you do all of that, if you go for your exercise walks, you build up activity points, you pre-track all of the food down to the measurement, and you execute all of the food you pre-tracked down to the same measurement, it won't matter that you went over your points. It won't matter that you feel overstuffed. It won't matter for all of those things because you essentially will have done exactly what you said you were going to do. You see, I'm always telling you guys, the key is to do what you say you're going to do. I'm literally telling you guys that all the time. Just do what you said you're going to do and your life will change. That's exactly what I'm having you do for the holidays. The game plan has been used for every single occasion, whether it's a holiday, whether it's a family obligation, no matter what it is, the game plan has always been in place for any one of those things. And the design of the game plan has always been and has and always will be do what you said you were going to do and eliminate the guilt in the process. So you like, that's why I say whatever you track ahead of time, is what you go in for. Because if you go above that, it will feel like you failed. Right? So if you want to err on the high side, you track a bunch of high stuff, but then you end up eating less, it will feel better than if you track it a bunch of low stuff and you eat more. Okay? This is not about you coming out of Thanksgiving with less weight. This is about you coming out of Thanksgiving with zero guilt. That's what it's about. That's what the game plan is for. Because the guilt you feel after the holiday is more damaging than the holiday is itself. Even though the scale might still go up, the fact that you executed the plan exactly as you pre-planned, it eliminates the guilt. I am not here four and a half years telling you to do something I haven't done. You see, the whole idea when people say, Oh, just be mindful of your choices. It's complete bullshit. Because even when you're sitting at the table on Thanksgiving, even the stuff that's the healthiest stuff on the table, on Thanksgiving, it's cooked in a way that it might as well be as unhealthy as the worst stuff on the table. So this idea of being mindful, it's nonsense. What I'm asking you to do is simple. I'm asking you to pre-plan basically going over your points down to a measurement. I'm asking you to put in some work ahead of the holiday. And then I'm asking you to ex execute exactly what you planned before the holiday ended up there. When you're making your decisions before the day, you're not making your decisions when the food is staring you in the face, it will feel like a win. You will come out of this with zero guilt because you know what? These holidays that we go through every single year, the holiday isn't the problem. It's the guilt we feel for what we did on the holiday that causes more damage than the holiday itself. So I basically taught you a method of going over your points on a holiday and coming out of it with zero guilt.
that's what being mindful is. It's not staring at string beans and staring at mashed potatoes and choosing the string beans. Because you know what? There's three sticks of butter in those string beans too. It doesn't matter that they're string beans. It doesn't matter that they're mashed potatoes. It doesn't matter that everything's covered in brown gravy. It does not matter. What matters is that you tracked it ahead of time when you were of conscious mind and you could be mindful before you could see the food, before it was a battle, you decided. Now all you gotta do is execute what you already decided. And when you do that, you will come out of the fight guilt-free. That's what I want for you this holiday season. I want you to exit the holiday season guilt-free. If you could do that, you will come out a winner no matter how much weight you gain, if you gain. Pre-track down to the measurement. Put in your work outside and then execute. It's that simple. And then end the holiday guilt-free. I love each and every one of you. God bless you all.